Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about multi-timbral instruments and their aux channels in Logic Pro X. There is a problem with soloing and uh, individually uh, using aux channels in multi-timbral instruments and I have a solution for that. This was changed in Logic. Um, it had a different behavior in version 7. And it then got a new version, a new behavior in uh, Logic Pro X, and um, you could switch back to the old behavior via a setting. Um, and apparently, this was uh, this change was introduced because of performance. So uh, I guess if you have hundreds and hundreds of uh, aux channels, uh, this setting may not be for you. But uh, it's really a life change, a lifesaver in. Uh, <clears throat> many situations. So let me get to what the problem is first. And I'm going to illustrate uh, normal behavior by creating a non multi timbral channel first. So I'm using a drum sampler and I'm creating a single track and it's not multi timbral. I have my, um, my channel up and if we go to the mixer by pressing X uh, you can see that um, uh, I can rename the track and it renames the corresponding channel on the mixer and if I rename that on the mixer it works here and if I mute here it mutes the track and if I solo here it solos the, the channel and vice versa. So these two are intimately connected. Now I'm going to delete this one and we're going to create a multi-timbral version instead. So I'm clicking multi-timbral and I'm also selecting my multi-timbral version of the plugin. And four parts will be fine. So I have my multi-timbral um, instrument and I have my four parts. These will correspond to one, two, three, four. Uh, I'm going to change the output of these tracks to incremental. So this one is now out one, out two, out three and out four. And I will assign some um, sounds to these now. I have my sounds, let's play them. Perfect. And I will see if I can copy in some regions I made earlier. And we have the following. Right, nothing fancy, but it works to illustrate the purpose. And I'm going to open my mixer by pressing X. And you can see that we have a single channel for the entire instrument. This means that I can, if I solo any one of these, it won't do anything actually. So that's no good to us. Uh, we need to create uh, aux channels for these, so we can solo them individually. And when you have a multi-timbral instrument, if you look at the mixer, you have this plus um, button that appears only on instru uh, multi-timbral instrument, and only on the first track of um, the first channel of the multi-timbral instrument. So if you press this three times, we'll get a total of four channels for this uh, instrument. Perfect. And now if I solo any one of these, it solos that. But if you look at the tracks, it looks a bit odd. They are all muted. So you can't really tell which one's playing by looking at the tracks here. You have to look at the, um, the channel mixer. Uh, and also if I try to go to any one of these and solo, let's say I want to solo one of these, I want to solo the clap, so I press solo on the clap, it actually solos the kick drum. This is bizarre, right? Uh, so why does it do that? Because these three um, aux channels 
are not really fully fledged aux channels. They are a lighter version of an aux channel. So the only real aux channel is the, the one called Instrument One right now. And so if I ever want to solo the kick only, I would have to go into the mixer to find that one. So that would be a good time to start naming things, right? So if I name this one bass drum and you look at the mixer, it didn't do anything. These two are not connected. Um, and the same for this one, let's name this clap. Nothing happens here. Let's rename this one then. And it doesn't work either. So there's no real connection between uh, these, this aux channel and, and this channel. And this has all sorts of problems when you try to, for example, do automation on these things. And um, if you have hundreds of tracks, it's going to be a nightmare if you're uh, looking at, the, at this section where all the tracks are and to find the corresponding channel on the, on the desk. You can't even solo it to find it. You have to... Oops. Um, mixer, thank you. Um, so, so this is a big problem, and um, the way to solve this problem is to actually bind the tracks um, to the individual aux channels. And I'll show you how to do that now. The thing is that if we solo this first track, the bass drum, it's kind of special. This one actually works. This has a slightly harder or more intimate connection with its channel. Um, so I can solo the bass drum, but I can't solo the clap. It will solo the bass drum. So, um, so this first channel is sort of a real channel. So I'm going to work my way backwards. I'm going to start with this one and I'm going to connect it to aux 3. So um, I'm going to right click on it and say reassign track mixer aux aux 3. And I'm going to go with this one mixer aux aux 2. And this one reassign mixer aux aux 1. And now let's try to rename this to clap. Now it works. And if I solo it, it works fine. If I solo this, it works fine and vice versa. So if I solo this one, so that's the way you want it set up. So I've used this technique on a project with over 100 channels and I haven't seen any problems with it. So unless you have a huge number of tracks, uh, I don't think it's going to be a problem. So I hope you found this video useful. If you, um, if you did, please uh, like and uh, subscribe. More is coming. Thank you.